to Chris Castillo this afternoon on the show, very candidly opening up to us and very honest and very raw, um, talking about mm -hmm. your dad. Is it easier or more difficult? Is this is this a challenge for you, or is it more cathartic? It's it's not it's not a challenge for me because I knew he was a public figure, mm -hmm. so this was expected, and I knew I was going to be the one to who was speak. to speak about this. So. And like you said, the raw emotion. Uh, I think what, that's what people jumped on is how can I write something like that while I was grieving. That's why some American bloggers have actually picked up the letter. Mm -hmm. Just zeroing in on the idea that how can this guy at this time of grief write something like this, which mm -hmm. is very raw and, you know. Um, but I, I just, I knew I had to. I knew in my mind that uh, I wanted people to know beyond the legend, beyond the myth, beyond the stories that this was a guy who was so giving that he gave to students. He wants his students and reached out, and he, he, he was a teacher. He wanted to be a teacher, you know, beyond the controversy, beyond, you know. And you're lucky because you had a father who was also a teacher, who was also a friend, who was also a mentor. What is the best advice you got from your dad as a dad, as a father? Well, it's not an advice as much as how I saw him. You know, it, it, it's, it wasn't always that easy for my father. His career wasn't always on top. He's gone, come down a couple of times. But what I saw in him was this drive, drive to, when he was down, to stand up and do it again. You know, make the next great film, be on top again. How did he deal with criticisms? He didn't like it. He didn't like it. Uh, he thought he was the greatest filmmaker of all time. and I support him on that and I think he is some people consider him one of the greatest Filipino or otherwise he, is. he had a lot of pride and I think that's what drove him I remember some articles saying or some writers told him that he hadn't reached his zenith as an artist and that drove him I think to do burlesque queen you know to prove to everyone right that he was a consummate artist right he listened to that criticism you know he wasn't immune to it and I think it fueled him more what about as a filmmaker when you forayed into filmmaking you had not just uh, a mentor, but a father guiding you. And he's not just a regular Filipino filmmaker. Mm -hmm. He was one of the best. Um, what's the best advice you think that you got from him? It wasn't really much as of an advice. As I think it was a gift that he gave me. He was visually talented, and I think that's what I inherited from him. Mm -hmm. And I just watched him the whole time. He wasn't that father who said, Chris, you have to be a filmmaker. He never asked me to be a director. Mm -hmm. He never asked me to be an actor. He just basically just told me, to do what I wanted to do. That was my upbringing. Mm -hmm. I chose to watch him and learn from him. And what, it's, it's a work ethic that I learned from him. And the idea that even if he didn't have anything on the set, he didn't have what he wanted, mm -hmm. he would still create the best film that he could. Burlesque Queen, Pagpoti uh, Nang Walk, that was years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, what was his most recent film? Uh, he was he, he was editing a film called Bahay ng Lagim when he passed away, so I'm not really sure what's going to happen. It was his first digital film. He mm -hmm. was going to, you know, it was foring into digital, uh, which he embraced, and he talked to students about it. And I don't know if we're ever going to see it, but, uh, and he was also working on his autobiography. He was coming from the printers the night he passed away. The book is supposed to come out in a couple of weeks, and we don't really know anymore what's going to happen right now. Do you think he was ready when he passed? Um, he just finished um, the, uh, working on the autobiography. Do you think he wasn't ready? He, you know, I think he, he was. Oh, he was because he was very. He was excited to shoot ang lalaking nangarap maging Nora or Nora next year for Sitting Pambansa. Wow, sounds like that. a good title. Well, very it's, interesting. it's a film that was conceived in the 70s, and it's one of those films that everyone's talked about. Everyone's been waiting for him to make, mm -hmm. and and it was going to be his team up with Nora or Nora. Mm -hmm. But for three decades, it never happened. Mm -hmm. And two days before he passed, we were talking about the film oh. that he was going to do. It, it was going to be his cinema paradiso, yeah. basically his tribute mm -hmm. to Philippine cinema. Because I always envisioned that character in that film as my dad coming home to the province and remembering his life. You're doing a full circle. Full circle. I, I love that movie. And I love that's, that movie. And I, every time I watch it, it reminds me of my father. And that's the last thing I told my dad. When we're talking that, this is your cinema paradiso, basically. You know. What did he say? I'm, I, I, I'm yeah, assuming he was very excited. He, said he was very excited. He's actually had me start writing it already. And then hopefully, I don't know, maybe I can continue the project. I have an idea that maybe I'd, I'd like 
to tackle it Maybe sometime in the future. Yeah. You know? Yeah. What was his? Uh, what was he proudest of in his life and his career? I think he was just proudest of the influence, his legacy. Everyone talks about the tributes, but his biggest legacy is the, the strength and courage to be an original. He was the first, truly, really the most radical independent filmmaker. He was, yes. And he set trends. You know, people followed his movies. He, he very, did, risque very risque when the society was very conservative. His films you know? have been banned. Yes. And I think that's the legacy that people should follow. You know, the ability to be rebellious. I remember you know? growing up, and I would see trailers of the movie Salsa Castillo, and I would want to watch it. But then there was always a ban or something. It was always <laughs> rated, and then I couldn't watch it. But we'll talk a little bit more when we return on the show. The legacy. We'll we'll end out the show with that when we return. Don't go away.